Hello friends, Fallout here, and I'm literally about to run out the door to get on a plane and go to Florida for GCX, formerly GuardianCon. But before I go, I wanted to do a quick summary of the recently published State of the Game D2 article that Bungie just dropped today. Read the whole thing on Twitch, but if you happened to miss it live, here's the summary. I'll try to include timestamps, so if you want to hear only about one particular part of the article, feel free to just jump along the timeline below. Okay, regarding ritual updates. In Season 22, Bungie is updating weekly ritual challenge requirements so players can complete their nine challenges in any playlist they want. Meaning if you want to do only Vanguard Strikes, you can do that. If you want to do only PvP or Gambit, you can do that too. They're also upping the frequency of ritual engram drops after completing ritual activities, and they're making the latest ritual loot pool weapons focusable at the start of the season for the first time. They quickly mention the fresh weapons they're bringing to the ritual vendors in Season 22, and they mention mentioned old fan favorites coming back like the Igneous Hammer, which is a god tier PvP weapon, by the way. On the PvP front, Bungie acknowledges that the PvP community is always hungry for more content, but to set expectations, they claim that if they focus resources on building new PvP maps that comes with a trade-off of other fun sh that players also like getting, like exotic mission content and so forth. Kinda hoping they could just use some of that sweet lawsuit money to maybe hire more people so that Bungie doesn't have to be spread thin between one thing or the other that the community really wants, but I digress. Later this month, we will be getting a new PvP map and hopefully it'll wash the taste of disjunction out of all of our mouths. It is a Vex network themed map called Multiplex, which they give us a picture of. Probably more info on that PvP map in the August 22nd showcase. Checkmate is going to be an experimental new PvP modifier, which is going to encourage more primary weapon fighting. Player health is increased, all ability cooldowns are lengthened, and special ammo must be earned via gameplay and is not dropped on death. Kinda sounds like what year one PvP should have been, TBH. Checkmate will be in Crucible Labs from week five to week 10, hoping that'll be fun and worth the effort, but I guess time will tell. Relic is a new 6 v Six party mode where players use unique relic weapons to wreak havoc. Relics include the shield from Vault of Glass, the spear from Season of the Risen, and the scythe from Season of the Haunted. I'm gonna be dead honest here. While I'm glad PvP is getting more stuff, this ain't it in my opinion. I'm only speaking for myself here, but I want more substantial changes and add-ons to PvP, not more silly, goofy party modes. Hopefully the addition of Checkmate will make up for that. But I mean, like we already have mayhem. We already have Team Scorched. I'm sure Relic will be good for a laugh at the very least, but I can't imagine that that is what the vast majority of the PvP players are begging for. It's certainly not what I'm requesting or begging for. Anyway, moving on to matchmaking improvements. In Season 22, Bungie is modifying the loose skill-based matchmaking settings for Control and Iron Banner. Hopefully these new settings will improve matchmaking times for players who find themselves at the upper or lower ends of the skill spectrum, which is nice. I hope that works out. Also, we're getting loose fireteam based matchmaking to the Crucible rotators, including labs. In Season 23, Bungie is delivering a new Iron Banner mode and a new Hockey Ag Frame Strand Pulse Rifle as the newest comp reward weapon. Now that I'm actually looking forward to because hard hitting pulse rifles put in work in PvP and I really enjoy them. They also give a reminder that they're focusing their map reprisal efforts on porting the Citadel from 2018 into Season 23. For the Vanguard playlist, activities, Bungie talks about Vanguard medals, which are coming in Season 22. Medals will contribute to scoring, allowing players to get higher scores and rep multipliers by performing unique actions and, quote, doing cool things. The goal apparently is to reward players for playing well and won't require players to go out of their way to grind for score. Some newer medals will also be coming, but in Season 23. Bungie also mentions that even more battlegrounds are going to eventually get added into Nightfalls and GMs. Regarding Gambit, Bungie admits that they've been quiet AF since Witch Queen. Unfortunately, the Witch Queen updates to Gambit didn't, quote, move the needle for player engagement. For the love of God, Bungie, if Gambit actually had decent loot worth chasing, like either Grandmasters or Trials, people would probably play. Bungie says they straight up don't have plans to dedicate more resources to transform Gambit, but they do have a few updates planned for the year of the final shape. Those plans include 
include porting in the Cathedral of Scars map and adding Shadow Legion and Lucent Hive enemy types. At this point, I'm on team either rework Gambit Hardcore or just use the resources at Bungie on more important things and let Gambit die. Seems like Bungie went with the latter option, which I'm fine with. Just a shame knowing what Gambit could have been. Bungie is also reducing the number of Gambit specific seasonal challenges in Season 22. Lol, Lamau. Armor set rewards. Bungie mentions that the ritual playlist armor sets don't often get a lot of love from the player base, so they're not going to be creating new sets for every expansion. However, they are prioritizing the delivery of a new ritual armor set alongside the final shape. They also have a new Trials armor set coming in Season 22, and they share one image showing that Titans can apparently get bear armor, which I'm not gonna lie, is f sick. I'm getting that. The game security part of the article is very, here's what we did and we're gonna keep hunting down cheaters. If you wanna read that part of the article on your own, feel free. But again, it's very much, we've done XYZ to get cheaters and we'll keep doing it in the future. Kinda hoping for more details, but yeah, I understand why Bungie wants to keep their methods quasi secret. TLDR, don't let strangers recover your account, boys. The game stability section is very much in the same vein as the game security part. A lot of jargon and overall vagueness. They did XYZ to try and make sure that servers don't get french fried every week. In season 22, they're gonna do chaos testing, whatever the f that is. And in season 23, they're taking even more precautions to help protect players against wild stability issues that may continue to occur in the future. Regarding the seasonal structure, Bungie's trying to shake up the seasonal paradigm this year in order to make each season feel unique. They wanna do even more of that moving forward, and they mentioned they'll talk more about that in the upcoming showcase on August 22nd. And now, quality of life upgrades. In Season 22, we'll be getting cosmetic favoriting. Pin up to 100 of your favorite shaders, ornaments, and emotes to the top of the list, which, okay, why not? Stasis aspects and fragments are being moved to the vendor system, and you'll be able to get them from Elsie Bray on Europa. Transmats will now be unlocks, yay, and the Wish Ender quest is finally getting fixed so it won't clog up your inventory with those uncharged disc thingies. There's now going to be a resources tab in collections, which shows you all of the currencies, upgrade materials, and engrams in the game with info on how to acquire it and what to do with it when you have it. Good for the new lights, I guess. In season 22, Iron Banner will have two different stacking challenges each day. One for players who just want their reputation multiplier, which does not require using a specific subclass. And one for players who are going after their pinnacle rewards, which will require using a particular subclass. And and ritual rank ups will now happen immediately rather than waiting until you go to orbit. Cool, I guess. Sandbox updates. In season 22, we're getting three new strand aspects. Whirling Maelstrom for Hunter, Banner of War for Titans, and Weave Walk for Warlocks. No other info provided yet, though. A bunch of exotic armor is getting reworked in season 22, and information on that will actually be provided next week, likely on Wednesday, August 9th. I'll try to make a video on that if I can. We got new weapon subfamilies coming in final shape, which we'll learn about more on the August 22nd showcase. Bungie reminds us about the upcoming weapon tuning preview, where they're going to decouple damage fall off from range in season 22. That is actually going to be a really big change. Stay tuned for more info on that from me next season. Next in the article, Bungie goes back and covers how well they did at living up to their goals that they set for the game half a year ago. Here's a quick TLDR there. Expand players' imaginations. Seems like they feel like they did a good job on that one, probably with activities like deep dive. And without spoiling anything, they mentioned we're getting more creative stuff like that in the future. Narrative wise, they know some players are mad that Lightfall's campaign was basically stretched out into season 21, but they do mention that the final shape and its raid will provide a climactic conclusion to the light and darkness saga before we look ahead at what comes next in Destiny 2. We get confirmation Bungie will not be raising the power cap in season 22 because they got a lot of really good feedback about not raising the power cap in season 21. And again, more battlegrounds being shoved into Nightfalls and GMs. We're getting a new exotic mission 
Mission Rotator on day one of season 22, and that'll be kicked off with the Presage mission. Also, Dead Man's Tail will now be craftable. We get kind of an interesting preview of a new bounty reward system with something called Pathfinder, which looks like a choose your own adventure type path to getting a reward thing, which is interesting. That'll debut on a new destination in the final shape. If I had to guess, that new destination would probably be that big old hoo-ha that the witness carved into the traveler. In season 23, we're finally getting the upcoming Fireteam Finder feature, aka the in-game LFG that a lot of players have been waiting for her for a while. In the final shape, big changes are being made to the progression system that will help connect even more players. More info on that in the upcoming showcase. And that's all she wrote. Gotta get on a plane right now, but please share your thoughts down in the comment section. Was this article it or did it miss the mark? What did you want to hear about from Bungie that you didn't hear anything about? I'm kind of sad about lost gambit potential and not enough substantial PvP and matchmaking changes, but again, that is me. You tell me you. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in Florida.